Hello and welcome to this talk in which I will introduce a fast detailed kinetics calibration methodology for 3D CFD simulations of spray combustion using the Ricardo software 3D CFD toolchain Vectis. This presentation is the result of a collaboration between Ricardo software, Volkswagen AG and Logi. Without further ado, let me introduce myself. My name is Charles de Conoze, and I am an assistant product manager at Ricardo Software with a focus on our Vectis toolchain. I am mainly responsible for the application areas involving combustion and in particular internal combustion engines. I have been working at Ricardo for three years now, first as a senior software developer in the Vectis team with a focus on our combustion model development and now as an assistant product manager. In the past, I have also worked as the lead CFD engineer in a small CFD consultancy company. I will start this workshop by explaining the importance of a detailed kinetic simulation and a fast and robust CFD methodology for their calibration. I will also introduce the Ricardo 3D CFD suite Vectis along with the various combustion modeling approach available. I will then highlight the experimental dataset used to validate the new methodology before briefly highlighting the numerical framework and setup. Results obtained with this new methodology will then be presented and some concluding remarks outlined. If you are watching this recording offline, please email your questions to rs underscore support at ricardo.com. New regulations being introduced are imposing increasingly stringent requirements for powertrain emissions. We have the polyton formation per vehicle already regulated with certification bins for carbon dioxide, NOx, particulate matter, etc. We also see the introduction of fleet averaged emission and the regulation of new species such as formaldehyde and ammonia, both being products of incomplete combustion. From these regulatory changes arise the need for further improvements of the combustion process with various avenues being currently explored, such as lean low temperature combustion, high rates of EGR, higher pressure, etc. Thus, there is a need for predictive tool chain able to simulate the complex phenomena involved in combustion. This highlights both the increasing role of CFD in new combustion system development, to reduce cost and time to market, but also its role as an essential enabler of the virtual product development process, where robust, accurate CFD tools with feasible computational requirements are needed. When tackling the emission problems, an additional challenge arises in the form of chemistry modeling. Indeed, the accurate simulation of unburned hydrocarbon, NOx, PM, incomplete combustion products requires the explicit simulation of the various chemical pathways leading to their formation, which in turn requires detailed kinetic simulations tracking individual species and their reaction. One of the most popular approach for such detailed kinetics modeling, thanks to its simplicity, is the well stirred reactor approach, which neglects the unresolved fluctuations of the thermochemical state. However, it raises questions regarding its computational cost and calibration. This approach can be used within the three frameworks usually available that are direct numerical simulation, large D simulation, and Reynolds average Navier-Stokes. Using DNS remains out of reach due to its computational cost. Large D simulations are more affordable, but in practice have a limited applicability in a design context due to the very high computational cost. The RANS approach still constitutes the industry workhorse thanks to its tractable runtime that allows design space exploration and still yields accurate predictions when appropriate submodels are used. This comes, however, at the cost of an increased sensitivity to the calibration parameter. The detailed kinetics capability has been part of the Vectis toolchain since December 2020 with the 2020.4 release. 
with the introduction of the Ricardo Direct Detail Kinetics or R2DK framework built around the Loki backend for the on the fly chemistry computation. In this talk, the RAN's R2DK framework implemented in Vectis is evaluated in an industrially relevant application looking at the engine combustion network spray A and the various operating conditions. This talk aims at illustrating the calibration process for detailed kinetics and demonstrate the proposed methodology accuracy on coarse or industrial grade computational grids. Vectis 3D CFD tool chain is a market leader detailed CFD tool chain used on a wide variety of applications such as propulsion and thermal management. It includes Ricardo's expertise on powertrain design and is built around the unstructured finite volume solver VSOLVE, which features key capabilities for IC applications, such as accurate performance and emission analysis, combustion modeling that is both regime and fuel composition agnostic, and it also supports all types of meshes and motions thanks to its arbitrary dynamic mesh cut cell method. In Vectis, Three combustion frameworks are available, with by increasing order of cost, complexity, and accuracy, the Ricardo 3 zone flamelet, relying on a reduced tabulated chemistry, the combustion progress variable or CPV framework, relying on tabulated detailed kinetics, and the R2DK, Ricardo Direct Detail Kinetics, that uses on the fly detailed chemistry calculations. The experimental data set used in this uh, presentation comes from the Engine Combustion Network or ECN set of spray flames. In particular, we're looking here at the spray A, which is a diesel flame fueled with endodecane. It features a very comprehensive experimental data set with measurements of the non reacting variable, such as near field atomization and inert mixing but also features a large amount of data for reacting conditions with flame stabilization height and ignition delay measurements amongst others. There is also a large parameter sweep in terms of ambient pressure, temperature and oxygen content in the combustion chambers, but also in terms of injection pressure. The geometry of the experimental setup is fairly simple with a cubic shaped optically accessible constant volume combustion chamber with uh, almost 10 centimeters of side that is fueled by a Bosch common rail injector with a single hole nozzle. The mixture is initially at rest and the operating conditions within the chamber in terms of composition pressure and temperature are controlled by a premix pre-burn of a mixture of hydrogen and acetylene. The injection parameters for the set of experiments that we're looking at are as follows. A liquid endodecane is injected at 363 Kelvin with a 1500 bar uh, rate pressure. The nozzle diameter is 90 micron with a blockage ratio of 0.89 and about 14 milligram of fuels are injected over a duration of 6 milliseconds with a mass flow rate uh, measured, experimentally measured and filtered, that is given on the right here. For all the cases considered, the wall temperature and ambient density are constant and kept identical. For the non-reacting cases, the ambient temperature is kept at 900 Kelvin with a pressure of 60 bars and a mixture composition without oxygen. For the reacting cases, the ambient temperature varies between 800 and 1200 Kelvin, while the pressure varies between 53 and 80 bars. The composition remains identical for all these cases with 15% of oxygen per mole. Within the Ricardo Direct Detail Kinetics Framework, the Fabry average Navier-Stokes equations are solved in terms of mass, momentum, energy, and one equation per species tracked. The turbulent quantities are closed using the classical RANS models. And within the species transport equation and energy, the production rate and heat release are computed by the Loki chemical backend using the well stirred reactor approach. Each cell is considered as a zero D constant pressure reactor 
where the main assumption is that mixing occurs faster than chemistry, and so the strong turbulence chemistry interaction is neglected. This means that the reactions happen at the cell mean conditions in terms of composition, pressure, and temperature. The Loki Chemical backend uses an efficient internal substepping algorithm to integrate the solution in time. This algorithm is based on a T4D solver that uses a predictor corrector formulation and is heavily parallelized for high performance computing architectures. In detailed kinetics simulations, there is no natural calibration parameters since the reaction rate and heat release are fully determined by the chemical mechanism. However, as we have seen previously, within the RENS framework, calibration is necessary to be able to use direct kinetics on practical grids where the flame front is not fully resolved. The approach taken in Vectis is to modify globally the Arrhenius pre-exponential constant with a reaction rate scaling that is applied for all cells and all reaction and allows to account globally for the unresolved scales. Let's move on to the case setup. The liquid phase is modeled using the Vectis state-of-the-art Lagrangian Eulerian spray, where face-to-face -face tracking is used for the parcel motion and candle functions are used for the gas parcel exchange. The primary breakup is modeled using the blob injection method, similarly to what has been done in the literature for this particular case, while the cone angle is modeled using the right Bracco correlation. The second dairy breakup is modeled using the Kelvin Helmholtz Rayleigh Taylor model with leverage correlation for the breakup length. Additional models accounting for the drag and evaporations of the droplets are also used. The turbulence is modeled within the RENS framework using the K-Epsilon model. The Eulerian phase is modeled using VSOL, which is a pressure-based finite volume transient solver that employs a simple-like procedure for the pressure velocity coupling. The equations are discretized using second order min mode scheme, except for density that uses a first order upwind. The time is matched using a first order Euler time stepping with constant time step size of 0.5 microseconds for a total simulation times of 4 milliseconds, which is the time at which the jet started to impinge on the opposite wall. Two computational grids are used with grid size typically used in IC applications, which means about half a millimeter. The grid M02, which is the coarse grid, uses a baseline cell size of 2.4 millimeter and two conical refinements aligned with the injector for a minimum cell size of 0.6 millimeters and about 370,000 cells. The M02 for grid, which is the finer grid and shown here on the right, uses 1.8 mm cell size for the baseline and two conical refinement leading to a cell size of 0.45 mm in the injector region for a total number of cells of about 850,000. In terms of chemistry modeling, there is a choice between detailed and reduced chemical mechanism. The detailed chemical mechanisms features usually hundreds of species and thousands of reactions, since the endodecane is quite a large hydrocarbon. Therefore, they're not particularly well suited for design space exploration calculations. Instead, we are using here three reduced mechanisms, where the Yao mechanism has 54 species and 270 reactions, the Kai mechanism has 57 species and about 200 reactions, and the Lua mechanism, which is somewhat larger, uses 105 species and 420 reactions. These three mechanisms are validated against recent experimental data for autoignition delay time at both 40 and 60 bar for stoichiometric and rich mixtures. This comparison shows that all the mechanisms predict fairly well the available experimental measurements and correctly capture the negative temperature coefficient at intermediate temperature values. What differentiates them, however, is the type of autoignition obtained. The Yao mechanism features a very strong two-stage autoignition with an initial low temperature sharp rise and then a high temperature fairly sharp rise. 
The Leo mechanism features also a two-step autoignition with a somewhat smoother low temperature chemistry, and the Chi mechanism is a single stage autoignition. The calibration methodology unfolds as follows. A baseline case is selected. In this case, we're using the 900 Kelvin, 60 bar, 15% oxygen case. And at these conditions, we start by calibrating the spray models using the secondary breakup constant. And the calibration is done against the available experimental data in the form of the temporal evolution of the liquid and gaseous penetration strength. The calibration is done independently on both the coarse and fine grid. Then, combustion is calibrated against the experimental data, in this case the ignition delay time, where the reaction scaling presented earlier is the calibration parameter. The calibration is done independently on both grids and for all chemical mechanisms. Then, by changing the operating condition without changing the modeling parameters, we're trying to answer to the following question. Can design decisions be made based on the obtained results? In other words, can a detailed kinetics RENS calculation calibrated and run on fairly coarse grid yield the correct results and thus the correct design decisions? The first set of results presented here is the validation of the non-reacting results. The liquid penetration is measured by 97% of the liquid mass, while the gaseous penetration is the further point downstream with a mass fraction of 0.1% of endodecay. A comparison is shown here on the right for both the liquid and vapor penetration for the coarse and fine grids, and the agreement is excellent in both cases. Furthermore, we can look at the quasi-steady state structure of the jet with the action and radial composition profile shown here, and there's also measurements of temperature and velocities that are not shown here. We can see here that along the jet center line, the fine grid and the coarse grid predict fairly well the composition and the decay of the fuel mass fraction, and at various action distance of 25, 35, and 50 millimeters downstream of the injector, the radial profiles obtained for the mixture compositions are in very good agreement with the experimental data. Furthermore, moving at the reacting simulations, there are two metrics of interest. The first is the ignition delay time, which is measured from the start of ignition and corresponds to the time at which the maximum rate of increase of the maximum temperature occurs. The value measured in those simulations is relatively insensitive to the definition used. Some definition in the literature used the OH concentration, but it was found that this variable is not very sensitive to uh, the choice of the definition. The second parameter, the second metric, is the flame liftoff length, which is the distance measured from the nozzle up to the flame base. And the flame base is defined differently uh, depending on which literature article is uh, looked at. In this work, the minimum distance at which the mass fraction of OH is 14% of the steady state maximum OH mass fraction is used, which is what most articles uh, consider. For calibrating the combustion simulation, we've seen that the constant alpha is adjusted for all mechanisms and grids at the baseline operating condition. On the right is shown here the ignition delay obtained for each mechanism and grid as a function of the parameter alpha. What we can see is that in all cases, when the grid goes from coarse to fine, the value of alpha decreases, which is the expected behavior since less scales are unresolved when the grid is fine. When looking at the change between the coarse grid and the fine grid, we can see that the chi mechanism appears the most sensitive to the mixture state or to the grid size compared to the Luo and Yao mechanisms. There is also a quasi-linear dependency of the uh, ignition delay time with the calibration uh, parameter, which is expected again since the reactions are 
increased by the value alpha. Once the calibration has been done, we can then look at the flame structure obtained by the different chemical mechanism at the baseline operating point. In this case, we're using the quasi-steady state flame structure uh, with four different uh, metrics, which is the temperature, oxygen mass fraction, formaldehyde, and OH mass fractions for chi, luo, and yao mechanism. The first thing that we can see here is that a similar amount of thermal expansion is predicted by the three mechanisms, uh, as can be seen by the identical jet tip penetration. Uh, we can also see a low temperature region close to the axis, uh, which is denoted by the formaldehyde uh, mass fraction, since this is a low temperature uh, chemistry product. This is downstream of the flame base for the Kai uh, mechanism and is around the flame base for Luo and Ya. We can also see that the OH levels predicted by the different mechanisms are fairly different. The OH is here produced in the diffusion flame uh, situated downstream of the flame base and very high level of OH are pro predicted by the Kai mechanism and lower levels for Luo and Ya. On average, we can see that rich combustion is observed since O2 is almost completely depleted in the core of the spray. In uh, particular, we can also see that this rich combustion uh, generates uh, products such as acetylene that appear in the core region and start the formation of particulate matter, which is not shown here. Uh, we can also look at the temporal evolution of the autoignition using the Yao mechanism. On the top here, the volume rendering uh, in the green color will be of the formaldehyde mass fraction and in uh, orange yellow will be the OH mass fraction while at the bottom the heat release rate uh, log of heat release rate is shown. So we can see the spray initially injected with temperature raising from very cold to hot as it mixes with the surrounding air. The formaldehyde um, is being generated first by the low temperature chemistry before being consumed by the high temperature chemistry to form OH on the uh, long diffusion flames situated after the base. You can also see that the base corresponds at the position where the heat release rate is the highest. If we play it again, we can see that once auto-ignition happens, the flame base changes slightly to find the equilibrium point between the incoming velocity and the upstream burning to stabilize. By looking at the uh, operating condition sweep, we are varying the uh, ambient temperature and pressure from 800 Kelvin all the way to 1200 Kelvin. The reasons presented here are for the Yao mechanism using temperature, formaldehyde and OH mass fraction. The first thing that we can see, as expected, is that the lift of length, which is denoted by the magenta dashed line, decreases with ambient temperature since evaporation rate increases, fuel availability increases and thus the flame can uh, stabilize much closer to the injector. The OH level also increases with the ambient temperature, with fairly low level at 800 uh, Kelvin in the diffusion flame to fairly high level at 1200 Kelvin. The low temperature activity zone, which is denoted here by the formaldehyde, reduces considerably between 800 Kelvin and 1000 Kelvin uh, to almost disappear when we reach 1200 Kelvin and is concentrated in the very rich region where evaporation keeps the gas temperature still fairly low. The flame tip penetration also increases from 800 Kelvin all the way to 1000 Kelvin before stabilizing, indicating that the thermal expansion doesn't increase much further past 1000 Kelvin. And uh, as expected as well, the flame temperature increases continuously with the uh, ambient temperature, with a diffusion flame here with temperature of less than 2 1000 Kelvin for the 800 Kelvin ambient temperature, all the way to more than 2400 Kelvin for the 1200 Kelvin ambient temperature. If we look at the flame statistics now as a function of temperature, we have the flame lift off length as a function of the ambient temperature for the various chemical mechanisms and grids, and similarly we have the ignition delay as a function of ambient temperature. The first thing that we can see with these two uh, plots is that there is a very good qualitative agreement between the experimental data and the numerical results for all grids and mechanisms. The quantitative agreement is particularly good for the auto-ignition, with a bit more scattered for the flame lift-off length. In particular, we can see here that uh, 
Yao and Luo mechanism tend to overpredict slightly the liftoff glands and the auto ignition delay at large temperature, while Kai tends to underpredict the liftoff glands and the auto ignition delay at high temperature. We can see that at the low temperature, where there's the more time to mix, there is the largest scatter of resonance, but that still remains uh, completely acceptable. The main takeaway here is that both M02 and M04 grid results in almost identical uh, predictions, which indicate that the proposed strategy delivers correct design space exploration response very robustly and accurately. Finally, we can look at the temporal evolution of the auto ignition from 800 Kelvin at the top all the way to 1200 Kelvin at the bottom, where we can see that the liquid uh, penetration decreases rapidly with ambient temperature, as expected, and that, as we've seen previously, the low temperature activity region decreases to be concentrated only very near the uh, jet center lines as the ambient temperature increases. Similarly, the OH mass fraction increases continuously from 800 Kelvin all the way to 1200 Kelvin. In conclusion, uh, we have presented here the application of a simple well-stirred reactor RANS combustion model and the associated calibration methodology has been highlighted for the endodecane ECN spray hay test case. The validation of the cold spray shows a very good accuracy on both grid resolution, typical of IC simulations, while the evaluation of the three uh, mechanisms identified the Yao mechanism as giving the best accuracy for this type of simulation, but with the Luo and Kai mechanism also yielding a fairly accurate results. The calibrated solution shows a very good accuracy for the ignition delay time and the flame liftoff across a large temperature range, and thus the process demonstrated illustrates that the type of model using detailed kinetic and the well steered reactor approach coupled with RANS can be calibrated using a single domain-wide reaction rate multiplier and yield accurate results across the temperature range on production-sized grids. Thus, we have shown that correct design decisions can be made based on the illustrated modeling approach.